subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel and press the bell icon to get latest updates. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. In my previous lecture video, I have discussed about properties of superconductors. In this lecture video, I will discuss about types of superconductors. So let's get started. The content of this lecture video is as follows. I will discuss about types of superconductors which are type 1 superconductor and type 2 superconductor. So first of all, let's see type 1 superconductors. There are 30 pure metals which exhibit zero resistivity at low temperatures and have the property of excluding magnetic fields from the interior of the superconductor. That is the Meissner's effect. They are called type 1 superconductors. The superconductivity exists only below their critical temperatures and below a critical magnetic field strength. Type 1 superconductors are well described by the BCS theory. These are usually made up of pure metal. When it is cooled below its critical temperature, it exhibits zero resistivity and displays perfect diamagnetism. This means that the magnetic fields cannot penetrate it while it is in superconducting state. In type 1 superconductors, the transition from superconducting state to normal state in presence of magnetic field occurs sharply at critical field HC as shown in this diagram. The list of type 1 superconductors is shown here along with the critical transition temperature known as TC. The third column gives the lattice structure of the solid that produced the noted TC. Surprisingly, copper, silver and gold, three of the best metallic conductors do not rank among the superconductive elements. Many additional elements can be coaxed into a superconductive state with the application of high pressure. For example, phosphorus appears to be the type 1 element with the highest TC, but it requires compression pressure of 2.5 megabar to reach a TC of 14 to 22 Kelvin. This list is for elements at normal, that is ambient atmosphere pressure. See the periodic table below for all known elemental superconductors including niobium, technetium and vanadium which are technically type 2 superconductors. Many additional elements can be coaxed into a superconductive state with the application of high pressure. For example, phosphorus appears to be the type 1 element with the highest TC. Now let's see type 2 superconductors. Starting in 1930 with late bismuth alloys, a number of alloys were found which exhibited superconductivity. They are called type 2 superconductors. They were found to have much higher critical fields and therefore could carry much higher current densities while remaining in the superconducting state. These superconductors are usually alloys and their diamagnetism is more complex. However, certain alloys show different behavior. The transition from superconducting to normal state is gradual. For the type 2 superconductors as shown in this graph, they have two critical magnetic fields. At lower critical magnetic field HC1, external magnetic fields enters into superconductor. It does not lose its superconductivity and exists in mixed or vertex state. It is the value of external magnetic field is increased above upper magnetic field that is HC2, they lose their superconductivity. Type 2 superconductors also known as hard superconductors differ from type 1 in that their transition from a normal to a superconducting state is gradual across a region of mixed state behavior. Since a type 2 will allow some penetration by an external magnetic field into its surface, this creates some rather novel mesoscopic phenomena like superconducting stripes and flux lattice vortices. 
superconductive behavior under varying magnetic field and temperature is shown in this graph the graph shows magnetic flux capital b as a function of absolute temperature capital t critical magnetic flux densities bc1 and bc2 and the critical temperature tc are labeled in the lower region of this graph both type 1 and type 2 superconductors displays the messiness effect a and the mixed state b in which some fields lines are captured in magnetic field vortices occurs only in type 2 superconductors within a limited region of the graph beyond this region the superconductivity property breaks down and the material behaves as a normal conductor which is labeled c now let's see what is vortex state for superconductors as shown in this diagram type 2 superconductors usually exists in a vortex state with normal cores surrounded by superconducting regions this allows magnetic field penetration as their critical temperatures are approached the normal cores are more closely packed and eventually overlap as the superconducting state is lost closer packing of normal regions occurs at higher temperature or higher external magnetic fields at the lower of the two critical magnetic fields in a type 2 superconductor magnetic fields begin to penetrate through cores of normal material surrounded by superconducting current vortices as long as these vortices are stationary the magnetic fields can penetrate while still maintaining zero electric resistivity paths through the material. A size about 300 nanometer is typical for the normal cores. While the messiness effect is modified to allow magnetic fields through the normal cores, magnetic fields are still excluded from the superconducting regions. As the temperature or external magnetic field is increased, the normal regions are packed closer together. The vortices feel a force when currents flows and if they move, the superconducting state is lost. Microscopic defects can act to pin the vortices and maintain the superconducting state to a higher temperature. So the microscopic structure and fabrication techniques influence their properties greatly. Vortices in 200 nanometer thick of yttrium barium copper oxide YBCO film imaged by scanning squid microscopy. Scanning superconducting quantum interface device that is squid microscopy is a technique where a superconducting quantum interface device is used to image surface magnetic field strength with micrometer scale resolution. Now let's see the comparison between type 1 and type 2 superconductors. Let's see first property of type 1 superconductor and type 2 superconductors. First property, Messner's effect. In type 1, they exhibit complete Messner's effect. Whereas in type 2, they do not exhibit Messner's effect completely. Second property, diamagnetic behavior. In type 1, they show perfect diamagnetic behavior while in type 2 they do not show perfect diamagnetic behavior third property critical magnetic field in type 1 they have only one critical magnetic field at c whereas in type 2 they have two critical magnetic fields at lower critical magnetic field at c1 flux starts penetrating the superconductor at upper critical magnetic field at c2 flux enters into superconductor and it losses superconductivity Fourth property, variation of magnetic field with temperature. For type 1 and type 2 superconductors, the variation of magnetic field with temperatures are shown in these two graphs. Variation of magnetization of superconductor with applied magnetic field. For the type 1 and type 2 superconductors, these variations are shown in these two graphs. Next property is state of the material. For type 1 superconductors, materials exist in two states for T is less than Tc. First state is H is less than Hc, this is a superconducting state, whereas H is greater than Hc, this is conductor state. For the type 2 superconductors, material exists in three states for T is less than Tc. First state is H is less than Hc1, which is superconducting state. 
Second one is HC1 is greater than H and H is less than HC2. This is a mixed or vertex state. And finally, third state is H is greater than HC2. This is a conductor state. Next property is change in magnetization. For the type 1 superconductors, the materials loses magnetization abruptly. Whereas for the type 2 superconductors, the materials loses magnetization gradually. Next property is critical magnetic field. For the type 1 superconductors, highest value for HC is about 0.012.2 Weber per meter square. Whereas for type 2 superconductors, highest value for HC2 is about 30 Weber per meter square. Next is type. For the type 1 superconductor, they are known as soft superconductors. Whereas for the type 2 superconductors, they are known as hard superconductors. Next is applications. For the type 1, not much grateful due to low HC. Whereas the application for the type 2 superconductors, it is useful due to high HC2. And next is the examples. The examples of type 1 superconductors are aluminium, lead, mercury, etc. Whereas the examples of type 2 superconductors are niobium tin, niobium titanium, niobium zirconium, vanadium, gallium, etc. So this is the comparison of type 1 and type 2 superconductors according to their properties. This is all about type 1 superconductors and type 2 superconductors. In my next lecture video, I will discuss upon Josephson effect and applications of superconductors. So please don't miss my next lecture video. Thank you. Below this video in the description, the link of important information related to this video is given. Please go through it. Please like and share this video and subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel to get the notifications about my upcoming videos. Thank you.